Before we start this episode, right now on Patreon, we have our first episode of Ram Radio 920 The Bricks, which is our version of, I guess, a radio show. It's parody. There's fake commercials. There's fake traffic reports. But it's the also, radio we want to hear. Yeah, but also new music discoveries. Um, all the music that Maul and I are listening to currently will be within that radio show, and mixed in with that will be some some skits, some bullshit, some funny morning radio banter, but perfect way to start your commute. So go check that out on patreon.com backslash Rory and Maul. He can't say right forward now. slash. He always says backslash. People. Uh, it's okay. And the N in the middle sometimes makes me nervous. Just that that letter just... Mm. Yeah. just yeah. I feel like Maul should say that certain part. New Rory in Maul. Yeah, like why? I can't emphasize no, that. No, you can't, you can't. But yes, subscribe to Patreon. Go listen to Ram Radio 920 The Bricks. The first episode. See you guys soon. No, Rory and Maul. I think when women snore, it's like, like what's up, man? What you, what you, what you going through? Like, why are you so, why are you so exhausted? That's how I know y'all don't be fucking thick bitches, cause thick bitches snore. Are we recording? Yes. I immediately regretted a threesome because one of them started snoring, and it kept both of us up, and we kind of got to know each other better because we. The, oh, the sleep. girl you were fucking. Well, she was added. So y'all got to know each other better. <laughs> she after. was the plus one. Oh, the girl that was snoring was the plus one. No. The she was the one I knew. Oh, and wow. then she brought the plus one, and me and the plus one got to know each other because. Oh, so that's you should thank her. I guess I, I was really tired though. That's I wanted honorable. to go to sleep. Yeah, like I'm, I'm gonna go to sleep and snore. Y'all two sit up and chat, and then I lay down on the couch. But what? did you, did you, did you, did you like have a a one on one with the girl? Yeah, we spoke afterward. No, oh, I mean I'm like, like sex. Oh no, I can't. I haven't fucked to snoring since college. Maybe. Wow. I can't. I can't just have that playing in the background. <laughs> See, just that's, snoring I know you, your that's horny, weird you gotta get your horny levels up I, I fucked them anything I wouldn't give a fuck what's going on in the room it's really one of my only pet what's peeves. going on in the world <laughs> I, I just can't handle even like when you're rooming with a dude I can't the snoring shit I just can't take it but it, I don't mean like it's so frustrating I don't mean like that I mean like cute snoring how do you think you snore I don't snore now Damaris you snored while you were sitting don't in like that chair awake so I know you snore <laughs> <while you're sleeping. laughs> Now you're trying to play like a big bitch that just be snoring while I'm wide awake. You snored, you snored while you were sitting in that chair awake, and I, yeah. I had to look over and make sure you were still with us. I'm big like, mouth breather over there. Yeah, like, like so don't, <laughs> you're not going to tell me you don't be wow. getting in some good snores while you're sleeping. I now. snore when I'm really, really, apparently, I, I'm told, I snore when I'm really, really not tired. Not apparently, I'm sure Like, when snore. I'm, like, exhausted, I'll snore. But, like, just a regular night to night, I don't snore. When women snore, that's just them, like, practicing arguments in their sleep. <laughs> Wait, how do you get that logic together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. When a woman, woman's snoring, she's just practicing what she's going to say when she wake up. They're just releasing anger. In the yeah, sleep. it's like, yeah. look, she's still trying to talk. She's yeah. still trying to argue. That's their melatonin. Go to sleep. <laughs> it's okay. Just go to sleep. The, the argument is over. Yeah. Good good rest. We'll reconvene tomorrow. Can you shut up for once? Yeah. Wow. You sleep on your stomach? I sleep on my stomach with the, in the figure four. Yes. In the what? Figure four. Figure with four. the one leg up. Like the one leg. Oh, she sleeps like, like she like a, like a flamingo. Yeah, she ready for a nigga to just slide right in. Look, look how Demaris. Yo, she, she, she sleep, sleep with it too, did? Yeah, she sleep. Yo, <laughs> Demaris, just get some sleep. Just go to sleep. Yo, what's yeah. wrong with you? You ain't gotta sleep like that, baby D. Like, that's you can the just go only to sleep. Way I can go to sleep. I can't sleep on my back. I have really bad sleep paralysis. That figure four. Ooh, that's when she ready. That thing nice yeah. and ready. She nah, I'll be like Broken that the in the bed by yeah. myself, knock the fuck out. Mm -hmm. no, and I don't use practice. pillows. I have to lay my head flat on the like flat, just on the mattress. I can't use pillows. Oh, you want it old? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Serial killer vibes. Yeah. <laughs> when you got a like no no pillow, that means you used to like sleeping on the run, like fugitive yeah. shit. Like you were you were conceived in prison. The yeah. logic in this, like just in this episode. So where you where you put the pillows? Like you just throw the pillows like on the floor? They be on the side. They be all like kind of surrounded me. But I mean, Oh, you build a fort. Wait, how many pillows do you sleep with? Well, I don't use any, but I have like five on my bed. Damn. Like five regular it's pillows. A waste of pillows. Five I'm sure pillows. there's someone outside of your apartment sleeping yeah. on concrete. Yeah. How, how many pillows y'all sleep with? Uh two. Same. Only, I mean, it's three on the bed, but I only use one. Yo, you guys never weird. have that logic. enough pillows. I and you just throw them on the house. ground? No, no, no. It's like there's two, and then there's one in the middle of them. And then, like, I only use one, though, to sleep. But that pillow ends up, that pillow has legs. When I wake up, that should be by the bathroom. I'm like, how did it get over the, there? The throw pillows, for yeah. sure. I'm like, how the fuck for did sure. that pillow get all the way over there? You ever been to a girl's crib, and sometimes the pillowcase will, like, move a little bit to expose the real pillow? And she's, pro and she's probably Ew. had that shit Ooh. since 97. Yeah. Ew. yeah Buy new pillows, people. You, so you can drool, afford it. Drool stains? Yeah. yeah. Maybe some other stains. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know Maris that. definitely drools. And like drool stains can't be that dark. That has to be something else. 
Oh, well, that's a man. You know, that's that's man drool. That's definitely man drool. Yeah. When it's a little brown, that's that mm. henny sleeping out his mouth. Uh, <laughs> sure. Yeah, that's that residue henny she, from his gums. He fucks someone yeah. that smokes Newports for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's that blunt. That's that blunt. That's that blunt drool. <laughs> Back with like, yo, why nigga you fucking that, that smoke cigarillos, man? Why this shit all in your pillowcase? <laughs> I yeah. never understood that, though. They, they would buy, like, these beautiful pillows cases from Target. It's, like, super white. They're bleached. Everything's nice. And then you just move the pillow. Like, yo, just pay that extra $10. Dead yeah. ass. Get a new pillow. You ever Get seen a new pillow case. You ever seen a woman's mattress by accident? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mattress, yeah. The mat- if mattress can talk, right? Yeah. Women's mattresses... He- are, heavy flow days. It's, yeah, there wasn't it's a easy, tampon it's, in sight. It's easier... <laughs> to fuck up a woman's mattress than as a man's. I was But that's why you should leave the plastic on the mattress. No. What? Yeah, no. you yeah. from the hub. I'm not laying on I'm not rolling around no plastic crunching yeah. every time I go to fuck asleep. I'm not No, you put you put the you put the like the um the 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 foam thing like the oh, what is it called? The uh the mattress protecting on top yeah. of that. Yeah, okay. I have a mattress then protected. With the foam thing, the memory foam thing. Like, you're not, you're not on, it's not just the sheet over the plastic. I was like, picturing on, you yo. just straight sheet yeah. on nah, plastic. Could, what type of and thing? not even like the sheet that nah, has like the a, little shit to, to grab nah, onto the man, bed. That's I'm some prison shit. Nah, that's some prison <laughs> shit. You can't know. You put the you put the, the mattress protecting over the, the plastic. And right. The top, and yeah, then the you put the, with the memory foam with the memory foam on it and then you put your sheet on top of it. Yeah, you don't you don't just put the sheet on top of the plastic. That's that's crazy. That's sick. anybody I, sleeping like that. It's like, fam, what's up, man? Oh, I, I feel bad. I think the last time Demaris stayed over, I didn't have time to wash uh, the guest room sheets oh from my when my dad was there for like a week. Oh, oh no, it never asked you about that. Definitely night. smelled like like Casamigos and oh yeah, shroom drool for oh, sure. Yeah. Shroom, shroom drool, drool? <laughs> definitely shroom drool. <laughs> shroom drool. What does shroom drool smell like? I mean, it's it's got a, a potent taste to it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. Yeah. You know it's shrooms. Like, you know it's nothing else but shrooms. How often do y'all wash your sheets? Um, if it's the same set or just switch my sheets? No, switch. that's different. Uh, every what, two weeks? change your sheets? Yeah, once a week. Uh, I do every two weeks. Every two weeks? Is that crazy? I do once a week. Yeah, every two weeks is kind of wild. Really? Yeah, that's wild. Oh, damn. There was a kid I went to college with that changed the sheets and washed the sheets every day. No. It was really odd. And that gentleman went on to shoot up how many campuses? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But that's definitely. St. Peter's was never the same. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> like campus shooter vibes. Like, if you cl- washing your sheets every day, what's up, man? Like, how dirty do you think you are? Yeah, like, what are you right. doing? I just every found that. Every day? Think- and then didn't shower with shower shoes. Like, you just raw dogging yeah. your feet, Ooh, but yeah. your sheets. But your sheets are squeaky clean, though. <laughs> I don't know. Nasty. Yeah. That's nasty. Anyways, uh, we can intro the show. Yeah. Uh, welcome <laughs> yeah. to a new episode of the new Rory and Maul podcast. I am Maul. I'm Rory. And we are back with another episode yes. of the audio journey for you uh, unsuspecting listeners. And before that intro, that was uh, Rory featuring Ari Lennox and James Fontoy, Phone Can Die, My Phone Can Die, rather, available on all DSPs now. Wow. Go get that. Album's coming May 26th, so one more week. And it's here. Had to give, give y'all another single real quick. You scared? No. Kind of relieved, to be honest. You yeah. never scared. Get this shit off. Yeah. So, yeah, one more week to the album. Right now, go stream uh, My Phone Can Die. I don't know how to sound more excited. I'm excited. Oh, and it's a fire be, record. You should be it excited. Is. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not Khaled. But, but don't tell <laughs> nobody that their phone can die, though. Why? Because that's going to cause way too many, you know, unhappy homes. Well, the, the song is about finally meeting someone where you don't mind if your phone just dies. Like, mm-hmm. you just want to enjoy your time together. Mm-hmm. So I know that's maybe a foreign concept to you, but... You know, some people put their do not disturb shit on at, at 6 p.m. And some people just let it die. Can some of y'all stop that, like, have jobs and, like, are in the workforce? Yo, my phone will be on do not disturb. Shit? My phone will be on do not disturb. It'll be 11 p.m. Rory will call me twice because he knows it's on do not disturb. It's on do not disturb for a reason. Yeah, it's you're the middle of me. a work day. And I wasn't even talking about us included, but we should all have our phones off the notification shit. But like, I'm Why? trying to reach a lawyer at 2 p.m. on a Wednesday. And it's like, oh, notifications uh, are silenced right now. I'm like, you're a lawyer. Yeah, <laughs> they're on lunch break fucking their wives. Like people have things to do. What? Why? Well, Why what what would a, a missed phone call interrupt the, their fucking? Yeah, just turn the ring off, you know, just just to like no, to vibrate, the vibrate, fuck. Yeah, when we're taping, I, I, I respect it. Like at night, I'm one of those people as well. But that shit starts to give me anxiety with people that I need answers from, and we're in the middle of a work day, and you have your notifications on silent. I've never put my phone on do not disturb. Apparently, I put I put like certain chat groups on do not disturb as a man, like, us? Like, like ours. <laughs> yeah, no, no, oh, for sure, <laughs> no, that, <laughs> for sure. That, that our group chat is not on do not disturb, but I have other ones that I'm just like. 
Because they just be in there all day talking about shit that they seeing on the street. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Not shit they seeing on the street. Yeah, like the homies is putting pictures of like drunk dudes on in the Bronx. I'm like, uh, I don't want to see yeah. that. There is nothing worse than just walking back to your phone after like 10 minutes of not looking at it and you have 45 text messages. Yeah, it's like... It's like what? someone's either dead, I'm being canceled. Like, yeah. what, what's like, going what, on? What the fuck is going on? So, did the Do Not Disturb, uh, when you put your entire phone on Do Not Disturb, I don't understand that part. Because when was Certain the last group time? group text, definitely. When was the last time you had 45 text messages and it was for a good reason? <laughs> it, it's never happened to me. It's We've never had that reason. many. No. I, something had to have worked Cardi B shout out. Oh my god! Oh my god! I never mentioned it, but that was the last time I, I had forty-five text messages. It was a good thing you had. Okay, we can get I mean, another yeah. update. Yeah. yeah, what's what's life been since? <laughs> yeah, tell us, tell us how you've been. People still hitting you up that, that you haven't spoken to in oh, yeah, since, since high got, school. Nah, but hold on. Oh, ever since crrr. Cardi shout out, just she's drinking wine at work. Like, what's what's up with yeah. you, yo? Demaris is wine six p.m. Yeah, you just a whole I'm different. I'm drinking wine at work. This but, is new. Yeah, but you never had it like right not there. Red, though. Not red wine. Is that a cabernet? And that's a cabernet. That's not even like not a cabernet. Yeah, that's not that's. Like, like, what's up with you, yo? Well, I actually usually only drink red wine on dates, but this is all we had. Yo, and if Cardi don't give you, if Cardi don't give you no tickets to her next show, that shout out is is not valid. Yeah. Okay. But the only way she's gonna get it is what y'all would have clowned me with Drake. She would have to DM Cardi and be like, "Yo, can I get tickets?" No, no, no. no, no. You think Cardi has a a list of people before she goes on tours? Like, let me reach out. I mean, she shouted out, so then she should be like, you know what? Reach out to Demaris, Demaris. send some tickets to the show, make sure she comes. Like, okay. You can't hit you can't hit her though and be like, yo, it's Damaris. Remember you shot it's him Damaris. Out? Yo, it's Damaris. <laughs> it's Damaris. Yeah. Mind you, her IG name is Damaris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't do that. You gotta just like hope that Cardi still remembers you and loves you and like sends you tickets. Cardi B does not know who I am. Whoever on her team that briefs her on shit. No, no show, she watched, she watched probably, the clip. She probably went to diss you and they were like, hey, oh, diss the show, but don't diss her because she was standing up. I still don't feel like Cardi was dissing oh, me. God. I feel like Here she was go. talking to other people. Both I, of you guys are still on this. No, no, I, I really don't. <laughs> now yeah, that she yeah, said yeah. it, I don't think, like, I, I looked at that. I don't think she was, I, she definitely was referring was to no me in some of that, there. but I think it was like other shit too, though. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. You weren't the only one. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I, I definitely didn't shit on Cardi. It was like when Hove does subs. Every rapper catches one subtly in there. You were just one of the rappers. Speaking of Hove. Your boy, I, man. Listen, you know we the whole Avengers. Yeah, we. What I can't that? be on this one though. That's the Black Panther. What do you? What did you just? Oh, do I was this? trying to do. Um, don't worry you know about when it. Iron Man take off into yeah, the yeah, sky. Yeah, no, don't worry about it. We got it. <laughs> All right. Oh anyway. my God. Oh I don't my know God. what that is either. I was me as the Rockefeller sign, but I'm a superhero. Like okay. seventeen minutes into the video. You know we the whole. <laughs> you know we the whole Avengers. Like a superhero. Your man, you got okay. your man. Like it's dog. the Rock. Yeah. Super Hove. He trying to open a a fucking casino in Times Square. Well, it's not just Hove, but. Okay. Yeah, you see how they just put it on like it. I, I mean, promise you, it's other people. It's a whole group. Of okay, course. but we only know Jay Z out of all those anonymous billionaires. Well, that's the that name that they're gonna leave coming. with. Yeah, they're gonna of course. they're gonna leave with that name. Yeah, a Listen, Caesar's man. Palace Casino. Are we are we allowed to say this? Is Avengers? Is everyone scared? Uh, no. Get away. Ooh, Fucking scared. ruined Brooklyn with the Barclays Center, and now he's going after Times Square. Wow, it's already fucked up. That How could he fuck it up even more? Brooklyn wow. actually. Some would say otherwise. Helping a a ooh, lot of uh, the local residents would say gentrification really kicked in for real in that area once that Good. Barclays Center it went. should. <laughs> wow. You niggas, is, you niggas is slinging dope tan down the community all these years. Okay, and there no, was somebody no, no, coming no, no, in no, 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 and trying to put money in the community. Off. You niggas is mad. I'm not so you think, you you think everyone in that area of Brooklyn was you selling drugs? Crazy. No, not everyone. But, <laughs> but that wasn't like a, a prestigious area. It doesn't, it doesn't I know, matter. There were plenty of older people or people who have been there their whole entire lives that tax paying citizens that never sold it there anymore. Yeah, no. Listen, it happens. But it's also, niggas is also killing and selling dope right around the corner from that shit too, though. Fair, but one could also say that the Barclays Center directly pushed out an entire community that could no longer afford the area they'd been living in their entire lives. It happens, bro. That's why the Hudson Valley looks just because it happens doesn't make mean it's okay. I, I mean, it happens. What do you want to do? You want people to, you want, you don't want like jobs. It also helped the community a lot too, though. It's a lot of jobs now in the community as a result of that. Like, don't just look at people not being able to live there. But look at all of the jobs, jobs that, that people have to. People who are working there probably can't afford to live in that area. They they now have to move. But yeah, they they can work there, but they can't afford to. Yeah. Live well, you uh, can't afford area. to live in New I, I York anyway. I love Applebee's and Target there too, but I couldn't work there and live in that community now with the salary that Applebee's would give me. Fuck. You can't you can't afford to live in most communities with the salary that Applebee's. Would give. I, I agree, that but is, that yeah. has nothing to do with. That's like, more of an Applebee's. But I'm problem. saying in a. For compensation of being kicked out of my own neighborhood, I get an Apple's B job. Like, I just don't think it's a fair trade. 
But well, I mean, listen, things will happen in the communities. Like there will be changes, there will be gentrification, there will be businesses that go up and places that we probably were like, damn, like I miss just it being like an old high school right here. Like mm. well, good tech is still there. Yeah, keep in mind now that they're aiming to put this in Times Square. How do we feel about that? For those that don't know, Jay Z's uh partnering with a I'm sure a bunch of Caesar. other faceless billionaires uh to put a casino in Times Square. A Caesar's Palace. A Caesar's Palace at that. I mean, if he wants to gentrify the M&M store out of there, I'm cool. Is that not gone? But I don't know. The M&M but store is gone, I think. Times Square is already a fucking mess as is. And I understand it's a tourist attraction that none of us even try to go near if we can help it or Hell cross no. through. We know what time it is. But this, Square. I think, is going to take it to a new level. Like, this is going to bleed outside of Times Square. It's a casino. And, you know, stats and data would never lie, of course. But crime rates go crazy when you place a casino in any vicinity. I mean, if it turns Times Square into old Times Square, I might be for it. Like when it was dangerous. <laughs> but I think like, this is just going to cause terrible. like just more unnecessary tourist bullshit. Like, does it need to be in Times Square? I mean, I understand, what, I understand what people land. are saying as far as, you know, just it being in Times Square and it being an influx of more people that is already a, a heavy populated area of the city. But I don't know. I mean... You putting it at Times Square where it's already traffic, where it's already people every day anyway. Now you're banking on most of those people wanting to go to a casino. Mm. You got people. I mean, I don't know if anybody that lives in New York City, um, most times out of night, you at least visit Manhattan once a week, mm -hmm. twice a week, maybe. Now, do people start coming to Manhattan more often as a result of a casino being there? Maybe. Does that bring in uh, more tourism? To New York City, I mean New York Definitely. City. North, New York City For already sure. has one of the highest tourist rates in the in the world. So I don't know. I, I me personally, I just think it's a bad time to try to put a casino in a city where now you're asking people to come spend money, and gamble money that they probably don't have, that they probably should be spending on other things. That's those are my. I'm not worried about traffic and you know shit like that with this shit. I'm also like, it's just bad timing because you know. A lot of people are just really getting on their feet after the pandemic, if they're getting on their feet at all. And now you want them to spend money, gamble money. Um, but at the same time, the, the when FanDuel became legal in New York City, we saw how much money that raised. Yeah. So but I don't know who's broke anymore. I don't know what to believe. Like, they tell me it's a recession, people are broke, but then you look at FanDuel making a uh, billion dollars in the first two months or some shit like that, or the first month. It's like, all right, who's really broke? But is that the reason this this may fail? Because, I mean, I know Atlantic City is drastically different than Vegas or what New York City would look like if it had a, a real casino in Manhattan. It's mainly old people that go to casinos yeah. as far as the frequent yeah. person. Old people are not dragging their old asses into Times Square to go play. Oh, Magic. they will. Yes, they will. Oh, they will. When people I don't know about when people gamble, all the young, the young kids are, are obviously now all have gambling addictions since everything's been made legal. But you can gamble on your phone. Yeah, Most sure. people are gambling sports, from home. But that's sports betting. Sure. FanDuel. But also and, like and the online poker shit. And all that. It's yeah, but, it's, but it's different when you go to a casino and you want to play, you know, the, the cards or, you know, roulette or whatever, things like that. Like, there's still a lot of people, like I said, older people that that's their wreck. Like, they yeah. go there and just hang out in the casino all day, gamble their social security checks. The goddamn machines. Yeah, I mean, slot machines. Like, this is that's just, I mean, it's entertainment. They're going to lean hev heavy on events, I would imagine. Concerts and boxing would have to be a yeah. huge part. Because, again, I just don't see the older crowd pulling up to Times Square. I don't see them leaving Long Island and New Jersey or deep parts of Queens and Brooklyn to come to Times Square oh, I see to it. gamble. I I see definitely, I definitely. They'll get on a bus to Atlantic City. Don't get me wrong. I don't know if they're going to want to walk through fucking Times Square to do this. Oh, they're not. At a they'll, high definitely, rate. they'll definitely go to Times Square. It's Times Square. It's, it's the center, it's the center of New York City. It's the center of the world. Like people go to Times Square. Now you're saying we're gonna have a Caesar's Palace in Times Square. Like people are definitely gonna go to it. I just think that the timing of it is just a little weird because again, we're supposed to be in a recession. We're supposed to be people supposed to be not have money and things like that. And then you want them to gamble their money. That's the only thing I'm looking at well, a little of weird. Like, yes, yeah, that's, that's, that's just, the time. Yeah. You take advantage of people when they're in a recession. Which is the fucked hope, up. The hope of, it is fucked up. Which yeah. is, that's all I'm worried about. The traffic and all that shit. New York City will figure it out. I don't, I mean, I'm going to get super local with this real quick, though. The Holland Tunnel was closed for how many years? I don't know if you've been years, by right? the Lincoln Tunnel lately, but it's a fucking mess because mm -hmm. the Holland Tunnel was closed. Mm -hmm. I doubt this will go up super quick. I'm sure this will take about five years and the Holland maybe. The Holland by Tunnel then. wasn't closed. Uh, for the, it, it I mean, during the day, yeah. time. it closed, it closed at like overnight. eleven at night to like five in the morning. Yeah, till yeah. till twenty twenty five. And 
where do you, I mean, you don't think the casino would be the nighttime crowd? Like people can't go through the Holland and the Lincoln's right there and it's already going to be clogged up. I go through the Lincoln after 11 p.m. now on a weekday and it looks like fucking rush hour traffic. Oh, but you know, they'll make shit available. The ferry is going to be, they're going to have ferries that bring more ferry action now. Um, this is going to be a and mess. This also it's going to be a fucking probably mess. probably <laughs> wouldn't go up until probably 2025. Yeah, it'll be a while. I figured it'll be a while. Yeah, but I'm just saying while. already oh, right with the mess. Time for the for the Holland Tunnel to be done. Okay, on top of that as well, uh, another thing I'd said to add that we didn't add, the Daily News, which is a very reputable, uh, reputable paper, Super. is saying that the ground of the island of Manhattan oh. may not be able to even hold the amount of construction that we're putting on it. I'm going to make this even more local. And you guys know when we were at my crib in Jersey City, yeah. the amount of construction that's going on right now Ugh. is fucking insane. Probably Horrible. the worst construction traffic in the United States right now is in Jersey City. And that's because, one, the pipes are old as fuck. Right. But two, they're building a luxury building every fucking day. And those streets were built in the 1900s mm -hmm. like they can't hold this type of weight of luxury buildings and the things that need to go through that concrete it uh, manhattan's fucked the if we get a caesar's palace sinking. and they can't hold the buildings like <laughs> well that's because you keep drilling you, they keep drilling and digging into the city so which is now the infrastructure the ground and everything is like compromised now and like you said all these developments keep going up all these luxury buildings different you know stores the everything they're just drilling drilling digging into the ground so naturally, is shit is sinking, shit is dropping, because y'all done dug up everything, and you know, yeah. and now it's like, you know, they're saying it's sinking, like we're below, like <laughs> what is it? Uh, not below uh sea level, not sea level, <laughs> not sea level, is it? I no. I think Manhattan might be below sea level. Is it? No, it very well might be. No way. <laughs> There's a lot of places that are below sea level that you wouldn't like realize are below. New York City that. might be below sea level. Yeah. Now that I think about it, listen, we've been very lucky for the amount of time. <laughs> That we've all been here living in New York. Mm -hmm. It just takes one wave. <laughs> well, we see it when it and rains. We are gone. When we get like a, a week of rain, we see it. Like it's the whole episode. San, Sandy we're not was crazy. Sea level, but we're very close. Sandy, of oh. course, was nuts, but like <laughs> that was light compared to what could happen. Oh, 100%. Like, I mean, of course, Dennis Quaid tried to warn us with Day After Tomorrow, but you know, you guys didn't want to pay attention the to that documentary. Um, that, that was not a documentary. <laughs> Yes, it was. He saved his son. You, you saw Jake Gyllenhaal. Man, in that movie Actually, was wasn't so even terrible when you think about it. He walked from, he walked from Philly, Philly to New no, York. No, no, D.C. He walked from D.C. to New York City. Yeah. In the, in the snow. In the snow. In a crazy blizzard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then, I mean, they were all doomed. But then when he found his son in the library, the sun came out. Well, I'm voting for, uh, I, say no, I say no to the casino. I yeah, do too. I, I think it's going to be I a mess. No. I don't really see benefit of it. I understand now everyone's getting into the gambling world because it's been made legal. Yeah, I, nah, get, the, I, I just, get the lick, but I just, we can't we can't keep preying on people that are already not don't have money and then you know put a casino and say hey come on come give us more of your money. It's just nah. I know. guess the cop out for I assume Jay would be like, well, it's Times Square. It's already ruined. Like adding in another tourist attraction isn't going to change much, mm -hmm. and it's not like we're putting it in an actual neighborhood that mm -hmm. would ruin it. So I guess that's the cop out, but I still think it's going to ruin everything above Times Square and below Times Square for a good amount of blocks. So if you guys feel like that's not beneficial to the neighborhood, how do you guys feel about Rick Ross's car show being stopped? I didn't think anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I read Nothing on this, about it. I, I read on this because Rick Ross had his car show last year and it was, a, from what I saw, it was, it was a big, big hit. A lot of people came out, a lot of classic cars were on his property. I brought my mom's Mazda. Well, Remember? there you go. <laughs> classic, um, one best classic. in show. But right. the neighbors in a, a in his neighborhood, they were complaining about traffic and you know the just the influx of people, garbage and things like that. Uh, as a result of the show, so this year he does they, it at uh, his crib. He does it at his okay. crib on his property. But naturally, um, you know, there's just a, a whole bunch of people, so cars are parked on the street, things like that. So, um, but. You know, Ross is, he, he, he's understanding, but he, um, he's saying like, you know, the, the community should embrace it because it's actually bringing money to the community. He said last year he paid, uh, some, 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 some kids from the area. They cleaned up, mm. they made some money, um, helping to clean up. He said that some of the neighbors should offer for people to park in front of their house, charge them. You know what I mean? Like $50, a hundred dollars to park See, here. That's but I'm sure that tough. community probably would prefer 
peace rather than a, no, for sure. a couple they, extra hundred they bucks. Don't, they just don't want they just don't want just the influx of people and the noise and the garbage and loitering and things like that in the neighborhood. Um but Ross said he's st still on, even though the, the, the city um, said that he, he he can't do it. But he's saying it's a private party on private property. It's his property. It's his land. He owns it. So he's saying that people can come and he's having, you know, he's still doing it. Business as usual. But I do feel like the cops will be there and they will stop people from getting to his property. It's wild that this story is on TMZ. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> slow news week. That's, you know that's I mean? really slow more so. I don't week. really care to talk about this Rick Ross situation rather than that being a news story on TMZ. But he Not did say they're say, above anything, but... He did say he's running for mayor now as a result okay. of this. He said he's, next year he's going to run for mayor mm -hmm. of the town because he's like, okay, this is y'all way of trying to stop me from doing something. I'm going to become the mayor. Under like his government name or is it going to be like, you know, Mayor Richard Ross? Like what? <laughs> How is that going to work? I don't know which name he's going <laughs> to... Mayor Ricky? But he, he did <laughs> say... Mayor Ricky. <laughs> and that's a result of him just feeling like, okay, y'all trying to stop me mm. from doing something that is basically like, you know, just is beneficial to for business, for the, for, for, for my brand and things like that. It's just a car show. It's, it's, it's part of my lifestyle. Um, there wasn't... I, I, think, I don't think there were any reports of violence or anything like that last year. So he's looking at it like, what's the problem with it? But you know, neighbors, they're like, we paid all this money to live in these nice houses in this area. We don't want all of this shit in our neighborhood. Mm. So that's just what it is. Wait, so what's more salacious? This or Charlemagne having to live up to his promise after Adidas and Kanye started working together? Well, I think Charlemagne's dick debt is hilarious. I'm sorry, what did you just call that? It's his dick debt. Dick debt. Got it. He's in the red. He's, he's in dick debt. Dick yeah. in, he's the in the red. red. If you think about it, because uh, I, I think the first time he's he said- He's up to his knees yeah. in dick debt. <laughs> or on his knees in dick he's debt. He's on his knees in dick debt. Um, he, the first time was he said he would, he would uh, perform fellatio on a man if- a specific man. Uh, if six nine came back and was successful, had a successful music career, I think is what he said. Well, You're probably misquoting him, but I don't really what care. He Let's said misquote was, him. Is that he would win the trial? If the, he won the trial, then he'd have to suck some dick. Uh, he didn't win the trial. Per okay, se. so he got out of the dick zone. He kind of got out of the dick zone for that one. Okay. Now this time he had the same lawyer as six nine to get out of that case. For Maybe because sure. if you look at it, six nine did kind of win that case. Yeah. For what he was facing, he got off. He had to be a rat. I mean, he cooperated. <laughs> he, yeah. Like, it's a win. A win is a win, right? A win is a win. Um, yeah. But this one now, because we, he said- We let that first dick slide, Charlie. Yeah, we let- We understood the one. case you made. He you didn't really win. You he didn't go to dick. trial and win. We understand. It's, it's a little, it was, it, was, it was a little slippery there. Pause. Ugh. But mm. this one now, because he said that he would again perform fellatio on a man yeah. if Adidas got back in business with Kanye West. Whatever happened to the good old fashioned push-up bets? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't like, know how we yo, got to Yo, I got to 25 like, push-ups. Not as interesting. Kanye gets back with Adidas. Yeah, but did we? Did he have to go to sucking dick? I mean, he was. He didn't really necessarily make a bet. He was on flagrant too. Shout out to those guys. And he was just like, if that really does happen in the world, that that can happen, he would mm -hmm. suck I'm willing dick. to perform. I mean, I'm a yeah. female. And I don't be making dick sucking bets. So, I don't know. Well, that's the problem. <laughs> See, that actually sounds like a great plot to a rom com. Yeah, yeah like I think that's that should yeah. be like women that's should make the plot. more. <laughs> yeah, like, like plot remember those me. old high school movies yeah. where they would like bet to make like the nerdy girl the prom queen. Yeah, like Damaris and her friends could do like dick sucking bets. You're the nerdy Wait, girl. Wait, actually, that's they the have that queen. show. It's called Sex in the City. Ah, uh, it already ah, happened. Never go. mind. Um, uh -huh. That was funny. See, Thanks, man. I didn't laugh, but that was funny. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I held back on the Rick Ross thing too because he's already held a public service job, so he may be great for Mary. Wow. <laughs> okay, you trying to go back to back on him? I see Anyways, what you're doing. back to Charlemagne and the dick debt yeah, that he's owed. Uh, he may I have to pay up to somebody. This one, though, this Kanye Adidas thing, I think Charlemagne might be in trouble. Now, I heard him on the Breakfast Club talking about technically they're not back in business. No, Charlemagne, technically they are because they agreed that they would continue to sell Yeezy products and Kanye will be paid. From those products. The rest of the portion of the And that charity. makes that you sounds business. Like business. That sounds like business to me. That sounds like you have to suck a dick. You know what I mean? <laughs> you either pay up or get out of the culture. All right? We're tired of you not making good on your dick sucking bets. This well, is, who, who is like the IRS version of this, though? Who's going to like make sure Charlemagne? Andrew Schultz. <laughs> whack. Pay, pays his or whack, yeah. Whack 100? <laughs> whack or Willie? Whack for sure going to be on Clubhouse. Like Charlemagne Yo, out suck there. suck that dick on Pyru. Yeah. <laughs> 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 on Pyru is nasty. That's, That's holy sick. shit. Um, yeah, but Charlemagne, we're not letting that go, man. Stop making dick sucking <laughs> bets if you're not gonna pay up your bet, man. Because that's you owe Kanye, not maybe not him Felicio, but you owe somebody Felicio in the name of Kanye yeah. and Adidas being the Stop business. Stop redicking on those bets, man. Because Kanye and Adidas are in fact back in business. Also, did he ever say whose dick? 
No, I don't think he. I don't think he was specific. I think he wanted to keep his options open. <laughs> yeah. You're adding too many specifics. To yeah, you're trying to like, put too many. Oh my like, bad, my bad, my too bad. many yeah, tangibles. Yeah, yeah. I was out of line there. He's just a contract. He made it very generous that he would do it if yeah. Kanye and Adidas got back in business. So we'll. Well, I, I don't know how we'll ever see it, but <laughs> maybe it's something Triller hopes. I can't even say. I was we'll, say Triller. Yeah, yeah. You can put yeah. it on Triller. Put it, <laughs> put it on. Maybe, maybe it could be an undercard on the next verses. Oh, JD and Puff. Nobody, Charlamagne oh open. God. Nobody's watching that. <laughs> Charla, Charla, Charlamagne versus Betts. People will watch it. I think a lot of people would watch it. You want to watch that? Everybody suck a dick? No. To? No, that's not. <sighs> you talking to me? That's such an odd question. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even believe she asked that. How is it an odd question when y'all said it would be on Triller? I said, would you watch? There's plenty of things on Triller that I don't watch. What are you talking about? You know how many shit, how much shit happened on Triller that I never watched? What are you talking about? You think that I would actually be like, yo, what time the uh, Charlemagne shit come on? <laughs> <laughs> like, how you even ask me some shit like that? Not like, everything is Dipset versus the Locks. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck? Oh, no, bad, I'm not uh, watching uh, that. Oh, my bad. I got you fucked up. No, you got me all the way fucked up. But uh, it's okay. I mean, he probably get the bag, though. I mean, listen, teach his own. crazy. <laughs> teach his own. We gonna keep letting Jay. Would that make him a prostitute? No. A what? A prostitute? No, that wouldn't make him a prostitute. Not crazy really. OnlyFans deal could come from that. Yeah, every OnlyFans deal ain't a good deal, though. Now imagine that kind of betting though, but in that new advance. casino in Times Square. Ah, they could, yeah. To open Caesar's Palace, it would yeah. be Chuck, because it could also bring awareness to the effects of gambling and making bets and sometimes the consequences of what they could be. <laughs> so yeah, this could be a very anti-gambling thing that we so could open Caesar's bet. Palace with. To, like, look, sometimes you shouldn't make bets. And when you make bets, you might you a dick. have to pay your debts. Like oh. a bad now, look, commercial. Yeah, it's it. Remember when they used to show those those gambling awareness ads where it'd be like the fake mob guys like oh we're gonna break his legs yeah this could be the new version of like look what happens that's just and Twitter. now it's someone get caught cheating, sucking a you gotta, dick you gotta go in the back and they make you suck some dick <laughs> excuse oh well oh for gambling if you get caught cheating gambling. yeah 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 so you know Charlemagne could be bring a lot of awareness i think Thank he's you, big on the mental health thing and like being this positive yeah person but that's of community. Wack, though because we could write a book about it but what if it's a dude that likes sucking dick I'm like, oh, y'all caught me again. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'm like, like, sir, this is your fifth time here this week. So you're like, suggesting yeah. after he was caught and said you caught me, he then went back to sucking dick. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's what I'm saying. You can't. Just, you gotta, like, he's like the John Moran of dick sucking. You got to think Damn. about that. Because some, some wow, going to be in there. Wow. Just continues on. Some, like, handling a different type of gun. That's sick. The John Moran of dick sucking is crazy. <laughs> I, t- I said I wouldn't do it again. Speak, yo, so do you know he? that there's, there's really people that's literally saying that... <laughs> And this is, I, I don't know, man. I just, I, every day I just, shit just surprises me. But there's people that's actually saying that John Morant is being treated unfairly. By people, you mean shit. A lot Harp. of people. He's a black man. If it was, what if his gun's legal and y'all only do it to our own? Shut the fuck up. Ja's only, he's only going to really learn because you get into a dangerous point when you make it through something and you be like, oh, that wasn't that bad. Well, let me ask you a, a serious question. If he does lose his Nike deal, will you suck a dick? Wait, 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 what, 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 what? How does that? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I won't. What if he keeps it? I won't. Okay. I still won't. I gotcha. don't, I, this is you're not, not what I do. Right, well, you're not committed uh, yeah, nah, I'm not to that, these bets. Nah, I'm not committed to none of those type of bets. <laughs> Why do people guy. feel like that's from chat GBT? This seems like a very standard ass. Uh, because he didn't, because he just went through this. That's why. I think so, it was more of a joke. It's a joke. But, but it's like, yo fam, you just went through this. You said the same shit. Two months ago, it was mad Ooh. simple though. I feel like we're putting too much credit on AI though. No, I feel like we put too much. We putting too much credit on, on the journey. On what the journey? journey. Yeah, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what journey are you talking? About? There's no journey. You're doing dumb shit. And again, Josh Young, we understand he's 23. Yeah. Has a lot of money. Everybody at 23 was doing dumb shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know any any most 23 year olds were doing dumb shit. My thing is, there could be. You know what? LeBron probably did this at one point when he was 23, but guess what LeBron didn't do? He didn't have nobody record it. Well, in his age, there was no real live. There wasn't an IG live that I'm was just saying, accessible as well. There's other players at this age who have done dumb shit. They just didn't yeah. have somebody recording the dumb shit. Yeah. They didn't have somebody posting the dumb shit social media. Now, you know, his friend in this second video, his to be clear, I don't. His friend didn't know know that he pulled that gun out. He yeah. tried to move the he camera quick. Away, yeah. His friends, whenever he's on IG live, his friends have hundreds. Of, that's why his friends keep going live because they know because fans will think they're with uh, and gotcha, shit like yeah. that. Yeah, they they. There's a lot of people on those lives. Yeah, but oh. I, I don't put that on the friend this time, though. No. no, I'm not putting it on the friend. No, no, definitely. The not. friend. I already told y'all the friend move quick. Going to the strip club by yourself and spending that much money in the back room. I don't care if you're a billionaire. Taking your shirt off and you're sober. 
Mad red flags. <laughs> no, no, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. So many red flags. I just thought that we would never see that again. <laughs> that to me is a little like, so he's just going to have to learn his lesson this time, unfortunately, but I think it, it will help him in the long run. I mean, he could sign a rap a lot. Maybe Jay Prince could fix this whole thing with the commissioner. Right. <laughs> not, a, not a terrible idea. That's a horrible idea. The Adam Silver <laughs> Jay Prince sit down would be one of the greatest things horrible to idea. ever exist. Uh, so Jay Prince uh, hit the net yesterday because everybody was saying, yo, I thought this was you and uh, Birdman. I'm like, fuck y'all. Yeah. Um, I thought the same. I see it. So Jay Prince sat down with uh, NBA Youngboy um, and Birdman. I guess they had a, a talk at uh, NBA Youngboy's house in Utah. Well, I believe it was an accidental running. I don't think yeah, Jay I'll, Prince Bird, even knew. Jay Prince didn't know Birdman was going to be there at the time, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um so they all spoke and sat down in regards to NBA Young Boy. He had some some bars directed at Drake uh, in his last album that just came out. And so Jay Prince said that um sat down. He put them on FaceTime because you know Drake is his son, and you know he he's Drake rolls with him, and you know it's all about respect and things like that. And don't forget about the the little threat he threw in there, the subtle threat. What was the subtle threat? Drake is my son. He rolls with me. Therefore. I think it's a good idea to take him off your enemy list. That is a threat. <laughs> is that not a threat? Um, not legally. He did not legally threaten him, but we all speak the same language. <laughs> uh, it's close to a threat. Yeah. It's, it's like it's threatish. I'm not going to say close. I'm going to say that's a threat. <laughs> it's it's threatish. It has some it has some threat energy in it. I think um, it's a good idea. But I like the fact that he says because the truth of the matter is that we got nothing but love for yeah, dirt of course. and your accomplishments. So, mm. you know, the, the the first words is kind of a little like it's a but, little stern. But you have to you have to maneuver through this threat. We have love for Dirk and your accomplishments. We don't have love for you. We appreciate as who you are and what you're doing and what you've accomplished. We can respect that. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good idea to take him off your enemy list because we love Dirk and we just think it's great that you sell a lot of records. Well, <laughs> we don't love you. I just. <laughs> Here's where this is because he could have easily said we got love for uh, Dirk and you. Yeah, but if you know anything about NBA YoungBoy and if you follow him, you know that I, I got it's more bars coming. Oh, for sure, it's more bars coming for sure. It's more bars coming. Like I don't. This is not to me. It's like okay. It's, I, I love the fact that you know Jay Prince sat down and spoke to him and they put Drake on the phone and they tried to talk it out. But if you just follow NBA YoungBoy, I you have to know that. There's definitely some more bars coming. I mean, he puts out an album like every other month. And there was some that, that came this week, which resulted in this whole sit down, right? Well, it was from the album. Yeah. It was, it was, it was some bars on the album. Uh, which I, I think the backstory, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that came from Drake had committed to giving NBA Youngboy a verse, I believe. And because the tension between him and Dirk, Dirk yeah. and Drake having a relationship with Dirk was like, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't give you a verse. Yeah. But do uh, you understand that? Of course, what? I got if I'm NBA young boy, I get it. I'm I'm I, I would feel away, but you gotta respect that though. Like, okay, yeah. I understand that's your people's, you but, know, you have a relationship. But also you can respect that, all right, you chose the side of Dirk, which I get, but now you're in the line of fire. <laughs> like I, I think it's fine that young boy diss Drake in a healthy uh, way. But yeah, I'm not I'm not mad at that. I, I just think that, you know, again, it's it's just weird because the Dirk Drake thing, we understand. Dirk and Drake have a real relationship, right? Mm. But I, yeah, they went Drake, to the, the Nike store together. Yeah, but but Drake, <laughs> Drake is jet skis. So, Drake is so big of an Oregon. artist that I don't think that you can feel any type of way for him saying like, "Nah, I got a relationship with dude." Like, I can't, I can't do the song with you because me and him are like really close. And it's also not fully a rap beef. Yeah, like it's a little different in yeah. that regard. Mm -hmm. So I fully understand Drake's stance, but I get. Young boy stance too. All right, cool. I get it. That's your man. You won't give me a verse. I'm a dish. I'm a dish. I'm a dish you with him. Like here go these balls now. Like I understand it. I, even if I disagree with it, I understand it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I hope Birdman and Jay Prince and everyone Personal. solve that yeah. for behind the scenes shit. If everyone wants to diss each other on records, have a fucking blast. Right. But we know Young Boy's records. Sometimes do, it's not just that. Do so, we ever think that that NBA Young Boy and Dirk will get to a point of no? 
Peace. No. Whatever, whatever you were about to say after that. My, my, no. No. Way down no. the line, if anything. I will suck, I will suck so? a dick no. if they get... <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Now, you know, just because you wow, said that, wow. you know, life is, yeah. well, life is, life is crazy. Life is crazy. Life is crazy. Just because what? you said I'm, that... I'm also a liar. <laughs> <laughs> just because you said that, you know what's going to happen next week, I right? can also lie. Your dick right. is going you up. See, when you see young boy and Dirk in the snow on snowmobiles like uh, the Young Guns in the Better Love video... Now, all right. Honestly, I... I would love for them to dead that because clearly there has been death involved with it. Yeah. So, of course, I want them to. Like, I'm not going to suck a dick for world peace, right. <laughs> but I do really hope that young boy and Dirk do settle that. I just can't see a world where that happens. It's gone too far. Right. How do you settle that? So, in what world, since you can't see a world, in what world are you going to suck the dick in? Because I want to know. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, what? That's Wait, what? I think the, just the fact that they just trying to put you in that box is crazy. <laughs> we did, we, did we say Rory volunteered to suck dick or did Rory? Yeah, you did say you was going to suck his dick. his mouth open and volunteered to suck dick. Should yeah. I add that into my bundles for my album now that Billboard allows it? That'd be a crazy <laughs> bundle. But the a album comes with it. That's a wild bundle. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> the, album, the album will come with it. So, Billboard has like brought... If people don't remember, Billboard took away the ability uh, to add album sales from your merch, your tickets, yeah, everything. Right. And we dra- we saw numbers from superstars drop drastically, but it had to happen. And they, they've introduced a, a new way um, to bring that back. Mm-hmm. Damaris, you mind reading exactly what the stipulations are here? Um, and while she does that, I will explain. With my bundle, I will not be sucking dick in the bundle. Like, Damn I, it. I don't want an album sale that bad. Fuck. Well, I'm, I don't know why you look at me in my eyes. Yeah, why that, did you stare at me? And that, that would be like, that's a lot of dick to move the needle. <laughs> <laughs> the things like, you got to do to sell records now is crazy, man. I'm telling you. To just move that needle. Like, I remember all. when it was just, yo, put a good album out. People will <laughs> no. love it. They'll embrace God, it. No. They'll buy it. Women no. in the industry been sucking dick to get their albums out for years. Okay. I'm not. I'm not being salacious. Men, I'm being men too. Say, yeah, men, I mean, I would say you said women. I, no, he, men been doing that too. Don't don't get it twisted. So for these packs, right? They're only restricted to two options per album release. Mm-hmm. So you can do like a T-shirt and an LP, or like a vinyl and some socks. But like that's it. You can't do more than two. Right. Um. Only merch. So no tickets, no tour tickets, no meet and greets like they used to do. None of that counts towards album sales, just the merch. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has so it has to be something tangible, something that the you can touch. And it has to include a physical copy of the album. So if Rory wanted to sell me some socks and slide a CD in there with it, that will count. Even though technically I didn't buy his CD, it came with my socks. Yeah. It counts. Wait, what? Yeah. I mean, I, I get it. It has to be a tangible that, item. That last loophole was fucking crazy. No, yeah, I, I understand that, but it this is still, I think this is still going to cause a problem, though. Why? I'm sure someone will find some way to get around this, but if you're doing a bundle and there is a physical copy of yeah. the album, whether it be vinyl, I mean, I don't know if people are going to do the CD thing. Or CD, yeah. I think yeah, if you're CD. getting a vinyl from me, that's a fucking album sale. Yeah, all of the now putting a link at the bottom of a uh, confirmation of me selling you a T-shirt. Yeah, that's a wild loophole. Yeah, but, but I feel like they, that's you what's can't a, do that. You can't. No, they got that. rid of that. Yeah, but yeah, I think they got rid of if that. you're getting a vinyl, like, yeah, I don't know how lucrative that's going to be for artists. It's if they, not, and I if they want to the put up the. Well, I mean, labels used to buy CDs. Like absolutely. you know that, right? They used to buy both. Yeah, absolutely. So I can see. We're going to see vinyl from artists that we would never expect vinyl from. Like, that's not even that world. And I, I can see labels buying a bunch of vinyls I think and just kind of giving it with T-shirts and adding to album sales. I think it'll probably be CDs. I think it's going to be CDs. CDs are cheaper to make than vinyl. Way cheaper. CDs? I mean, what the fuck are you going to play a CD at? That's not, they don't want them to play it. That's not but not point. everybody they has a vinyl player either. They count as an album. But that's player. what I'm saying. To me, that's crazy. Yeah, but fuck it. You I mean, can't even play that, but you want that. But people like it, having the art, having the actual tangible item. I have CDs from some artists. But not even too. that. If I'm going to go buy a Bare Minimum Boys t-shirt right. or whatever, let's say, and Rory's album comes with Chips. it. Okay, sure. God damn it. I was going to buy the t-shirt already. Oh, my bad, dog. He wasn't thinking in advance. <laughs> um, I was going to buy the t-shirt already. Okay, I get the album. That count as an album sale for him, even though I wasn't going to buy the album. I've already been illegally fucking streaming it on Napster. I now Napster. still get his album. So it still counts as an album sale, even though I wasn't going to buy it. It doesn't matter that I have nowhere to play the fucking CD. Right. I was never going to buy it to begin with, but he still gets the sell off. I, uh, I had a 
I've actually never talked about this. I had an interesting conversation with someone at Spotify when we were with the old pod and I was started to manage Emotional Oranges. And when I would play the songs on there and we were a Spotify exclusive podcast at that time, I was arguing to them that that should count towards the streams of Emotional Oranges because it was streamed at that time. And I have the exact data of the amount of people that were listening at that time. That should count as a stream. And of course, I was laughed out of the okay. office. Yeah. And it wasn't like a uh, like I ran in there like, I demand, I didn't run in like Ice How Cube dare you? in NWA and start <laughs> smashing plaques. But I did try to make an argument that that should exist, that if we're playing music on podcasts, that that stream should go to the artist in which it was played. And I thought that would value podcasts and music connection way more. But Remind they were like, me, they how were how like no. <laughs> like how many they didn't seconds even give much explanation. They're like, no. <laughs> how many seconds have to be played? Technically. For a stream, uh, I think it's over 30 seconds. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Then, yeah, in that case, regardless. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was a weird this argument. Is just another, this is just another way, I guess. I mean, but then copyright gets weird in that. Like, I kind of went in there just on a limb because I already knew that gets weird because what if the artist is signed to a major and now we have to get right. them involved with Spotify on distribution? And I knew that was going to be a mess, but. Mm -hmm. I still think this is dope because it's kind of bringing back a lot more of the culture of merch with musical artists. I feel like that died down for a while, don't you think? Mm, I think people always been getting merch off. Shitty merch, but people Shitty always merch. been getting merch Hopefully off. you can do something a little better. I mean, it does well at, at shows. At shows, but like sure. outside of, the mar of that market? No, but I mean, I think artists are much more concerned about the person that goes to the shows because that's a consumer. That's someone that they know mm. buys. buys. They bought a ticket. Yeah. Right, right. So that means they may buy something else rather than let's focus all our attention on Out. Instagram followers that we know don't translate. Like I have a million followers. I sold 10,000 records. Clearly there's a disconnect here. Let's focus on those 10,000 people because we know they bring cash and they pay. Right. So that's why, you know, most artists wait till the tour to really do the merch shit. I mean, what could be a loophole for something like this? They can't do the link. It has to be buy, buy out a bunch of vinyls and just throw them in the oh. merch bags. That's what I'm saying. Like, but it would just it, cost it, a lot. Vinyls it, is fucking expensive. And it vinyls takes a while are very to make. expensive. But I do think that if you're somebody that buys merch and you really like support merch from an artist, I think you appreciate vinyl more mm. because it's more of a piece. It's more of, you know, uh, uh, you can put it in your next to your record player. I know a lot of people have record players now, things like that. Even if you never open it, Maybe if they sign the actual vinyl cover, yeah, or something like that. Like, I just think that there's, there's gonna they're gonna find a way to end up getting rid of that as well. But I feel like even after Astro World, because that was kind of the, if I remember correctly, what changed a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Nikki was very vocal about it, which I fully understood what Nikki was saying. Yeah. Um, since then, also, though, I feel like people don't care about album sales. Like they used to, except for a few of the major artists that need that number one because they need that ac that accolade mm -hmm. and that perception. Like her sold thirty thousand records, which is great, but mm -hmm. no one cared. Like one would think with perception, her would would sell a hundred k. I mean, she sold thirty first week, which is great, but like no one cared. Nobody People don't care unless it's. Unless the you make a, them care. A, a a list artist, like they have to get that number one. And when people put such an emphasis on it, yeah. Because some of our favorite projects that ever came out, I don't know what they sold their first week. And don't like, care what they sold their first week. Even I've I've watched even the a listers like album sales drop, but relevancy go up. So it's like, are these things even connected? Because mm -hmm. Cole dropped, Kendrick dropped, but their relevancy and the attention on them and even quality music all rose. <laughs> I mean, Kendrick had what the the best rap tour. Mm -hmm. The highest gross and rap tour right. in history. Ever. And they were killing him first week of, I think he sold maybe 175000 less than Damn mm -hmm. on the first week. Maybe even more. Mm -hmm. But clearly, sales are not translating to what matters. He right. The, the most, he sold a million tickets. You're right. You know how crazy that is? Insane. One million hard, hard tickets. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. That's insane. So, yeah, did, I get the bundle shit, but are we going to break our backs to make the perception of our first week numbers look some type of way? Mm. Nah. Not when, I'm, not when I'm selling a million tickets. Yeah, you, I, I really don't. That's what I'm saying. I, that type of shit is whatever. As long as the art is good and you're able to put on a good show, like, none right. of that shit matters. Like, Because now I want to know how many tickets, how many albums Kendrick sold as a result of the tour. Yeah, because who knows what they like, did. I want to look. I want to yeah. find that out because I'm, I'm pretty sure 
if you're able to sell a million tickets to a show, some people that went to that show probably didn't have the album. Yeah. But they were just like, yo, Kendrick's in town. Like, go check him out. And I, and, and it's off, hard to see that show and not be like, damn, that shit is dope. Off hard copies, too, you got to think. A million tickets. I could see the Kendrick fan, 35 to 40% of people maybe buying vinyl mm -hmm. out of that, which is insane. Right. So I'm, that's a great question. I'm yeah, I, will, I definitely want to see how much you sold. See, he would have killed because, you know, they used to include, you used to be able to bundle the album with a ticket sale. Yeah. A million tickets sold. That would been crazy. If you get 10% to buy. Yeah. You sold a million on your 75th week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's insane. Well, we're staying with music. A million extra. <laughs> staying with music, but going back a little bit with AI. So Timbaland right now is uh, revealing a new AI startup, but it kind of focuses on what he just did recently, which was that collaboration with Biggie. It wasn't a collaboration. Well, collabor that's No, it wasn't a collaboration. That's the thing. They call um, it a collaboration. It was not a collaboration. They call it a collab. That's the who, crazy who thing. They? Yeah, who's they? You know, the, you know the culture. The AI. The culture did not call the it a AI collab. culture. The AI culture. Yeah. Timbaland called that a collab. Yeah. So, but he's actually like making like an app or like a program. So, so that this is kind of, I guess, transcend into the music industry. Well, he was suggesting that he agrees that this AI software now with the vocals sounds awful, but he wants to lead the charge in the culture of hip hop and AI to find a way to make these vocals as crispy as if they would be really in the studio. I feel like this is weird as he, fuck. He kind of said a lot of nothing, I'll be quite honest. And uh, once I read the article, yeah. the headlines were a bit misleading. Mm -hmm. All he really did say was he wants to lead the charge with AI. I don't like He it. didn't really have much play. Oh, I don't like it either. I, I think it's either. fucking awful. And he this said he's going to find new. That's the, the one thing everyone that loves this AI shit that keeps running back to. Oh, it, it'll create new revenue streams for producers. No. At what the is expense it? of what? Yeah, no. <laughs> what I, really I don't though? like it. I don't think it's a great it's a good idea. Um, you know, you playing with people people's legacies, um, you know, their likeness that are no longer here. I just don't let's focus on like just newer talent, like talent that is still here, people that are still with us. Like let's let's do something for that. Like I just trying to, you know, bring up legends that are are, are have gone and passed away. And have new producers create songs with, with their voice and their, I just don't, that shit is just, it's, 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 it's weird to me. But the sickest part of the article was he wanted to more focus on the artists that had passed. Yeah. And that's where I really think it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Even, you remember when the Biggie duets came out? Mm-hmm. Some jams on there. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, a lot of people were upset, like, you know, would Big even, like, want this artist featured on with him? Like, right. this beat over that? Mm-hmm. And those were verses that Biggie actually spit. We know he was going to say that, and right. it was still fucked up. Mm -hmm. Now someone that passed, we get to decide what they say. Yeah. Fuck what the music around the verses is. At least mm -hmm. Big said those things. At least right. that was shit Big he agreed wrote, he that he, he, said. <laughs> yeah. he said it. Mm -hmm. He agreed with what he said. Right. Now we get to decide what people have passed, their opinions. Yeah, nah. That's I fucking crazy. It's just a bad idea. I don't like it. Uh, and Timberland is, is is a legend in our culture. A who who will be the genius. first dead artist that we cancel based off an of AI rhyme that they didn't even say? Biggie. <laughs> Probably Biggie, yeah. In this case. First of all, there's a lot of cancelable Biggie lines to begin with. But oh, yeah. Yeah, no, so I, that's what I'm saying. I, I just don't like that. I, I, just let the, let, the, let, the, let the dead, you know, let them rest yeah. and just leave it at that. Let's focus on, you know, new talent that's here, new talent that's, you know. I personally feel like that's a weird obsession to make that happen. It's just, it's weird, bro. It's like, not, nothing. Especially if you fuck with someone's art. It's just weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I, like, if AI was to generate a Basquiat painting right now, like, that's weird to me. Yeah, like, yeah, Basquiat exactly. Not paint that. You know what I mean? Like, what are you talking about? That, that's just, that's just weird. It's like, it's almost like even printing out a Basquiat Paint yeah, it. and just, be like, "Here's a Basquiat." Like, no, no, you it's just, not. You printed that from the internet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's just. So not. you guys don't give Timbaland or any other AI permission to use your voices for a podcast if you are no longer here. No, not even a little bit. What no. would the Rory Mall AI podcast talk about, though? The same shit we talk about. Yeah, but like, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's what yeah. you think. That's what we talk about. But yeah. even that, like with the dead artists, of course, this technology can sift through everything they've ever said and come right. up with what they think they would say. Why do we need that already? We have everything Biggie said already. We would want new ideas from Big. Right. Not generated off what he said already and let's spit out. Like, I would like new life experiences from Big if mm -hmm. he was alive. Yeah. Now that he's dead, I don't need a new version of Dead Wrong. 
that a computer came up with. <laughs> it's just like nah. I just I don't. <laughs> nah, Tim, this ain't it, bro. <laughs> yeah. We, well, we said that when he put out that video with him uh, when he made a beat. With yeah, but now he wants voice. like a launch a whole thing. But that's what this was. That was all tied in. He knew yeah. it, he knew this was coming. That was just a rollout for this, and it's just like nah. I saw this meme uh, today. Humans doing the hard jobs on minimum wage while the robots write poetry and paint is not the future I wanted. That's kind of crazy, yeah. right? That it's, insane. it's wild as fuck. Well, I feel like part of podcasting is telling our own stories. Absolutely. That's the Con best po part of podcasting. Our beverages need to match that that type of thinking as well. Because so many brands aren't on the exact same time we are on right. as far as telling our own story mm -hmm. and as forward thinking. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think Martell might be the best way for us to really tell our story on this podcast. Martell Blue Swift is the first spirit made of VSOP Cognac. OG. And it's finished in bourbon casks. That's a fact. For an exceptionally smooth, rich... Yeah. Quality taste. My favorite taste. So why not match your lifestyle to your drink? Gotta match this pod. Martell Blue Swift. Whether you want it neat, the rocks, cocktails, however you take your drink, Rory, you can have Martell Blue Swift that way. I'm on the rocks, guys. Sometimes I go crazy and get a double. You know you're in good hands with Martell. They're the oldest of the great cognac houses and are always taking an unexpected and innovative approach when it comes to their cognac. With that said, Maul, get your bottle at a store near you or online at martell.com. Enjoy our quality responsibly copyright 2023 imported by Marto and company New York New York I just want to note quickly Larry Page is still missing <laughs> You've been I know about no that one shit since we walked in like what's up with you no Larry one is Page? covering you know this Do you on know the, where he's at no and that's the problem and I feel like you might know where he's at why are no news agencies platforms covering this because they all know each other and he, he told them like not to even talk about it so Simple. JP Morgan is wanted by the U.S. Virgin Islands for ties to Epstein mm -hmm. and Larry Page as well. And then when he's about to be served, his papers or his subpoena, whatever the fuck it is. I got to go. We, it's been two weeks. Yeah. We don't know where one of the co-founders of Google is. Yeah. That's All right. So, we don't have to do a deep dive. No, listen, I'm just, I just wanted to note to everyone listening now, Larry Page is still no, it's, it's similar missing. to when, It's similar to when, you know, <laughs> Russell Simmons went to Bali during the pandemic and he got stuck there. And he was on every Zoom meeting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I got stuck in Bali. Re replying to everything. <laughs> like, bro, listen, there's a airport right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A no, plane Bali's just went open. over your head. But yeah, Bali's open. It's open now. Did Mark Millen kill himself? I don't know. Um, wow. Anyways, wow. new music. Yeah. New, new music, music on the way. Uh, if, you, if you're listening to this now, uh, Belly, uh, Mumble Rap 2. And Mumble Rap 2. at the same time. <laughs> Yo. And then there wasn't a gun found. Then the gun was found. Hey, hey Anyways. Hey. <laughs> New music. Belly. Mumble rap too. Mumble rap. Too. Listen, man. I feel shit, like Belly is going to dress some of this the shit. The shit that I care about. Mumble rap too. Belly is available now on your DSPs. Uh, I know that Hip Boy produced most of this project, mm. uh, but there's other production on there as well. Welcome home to Hip Boy's dad as well. Welcome home to Big Hit. Mm -hmm. um, so Mumble rap too. Available now on your DSP. Shout out to my brother Belly. I'm excited to listen to that one. Uh, Clear 2, Soft Life EP by Summer Walker is also available now. Yes. Uh, so if you want to get your facial this weekend, Rory, if you want to, you know, wait, 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 what? Time for yourself, you know, Rory gets facials. It's okay. Excuse me? Like for skincare. Like oh, sorry, sir. Not See, this is mind. why you got to, you know. We, we were talking about the dick dead earlier. And that's because you were hanging out with Flagrant 2 and yeah. Charlemagne was there. Yeah, so all those guys. Yeah, you try to tie all of the nasty shit in. No, <laughs> we, I can't have do um, Separate pop. Yeah, I don't know sorry. if it's going to be on here, so I, I hope we're not spoiling anything because we're recording this on a Thursday and this comes out on a Friday. Um, the We get two J. Cole verses back to back. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, Justice had played us that that Cole, which I think is the intro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, when Brian Michael Cox blew up my bathroom. <laughs> and as, you and, and, Beacock's business and as like Damaris is now coined at the studio now, uh, did someone BMC the bathroom? <laughs> BMC the bathroom is fucking Damaris hilarious. Damaris said that to me yesterday. I could not stop. Like, wow. Yo, make sure no one BMC'd that shit. <laughs> Somebody wow. BMC'd the bathroom the other day. I'm going to find out who it was. Not me. It was the person you invited. No. Yeah. Definitely not. Wow. It was, they said that. I hate to break it to you. No, it was 100%. No. Rory, it wasn't. So it smelled before she went in. It's still, it's the sewage. It's the drain inside the bathroom on the floor. Oh, okay. Yeah. We pay way too much for that to happen in this it's bathroom. A new, new <laughs> okay, because I felt away. And in my head, I was like, wow, she did that very quickly. Because I used the bathroom right after her. Man, stop. I didn't <laughs> you think that I would ever. Allow she ran out of here. I didn't know. No, that would never happen. Well, and you then, thought you wasn't beaten. It still would never. You think that I would bring somebody here to take a shit in our studio? <laughs> well, you didn't know she had to take a shit. Maybe she didn't yeah. know she had to take a shit. So you she asked her, down. number one or number two? She said she had to use, she said she had to pee. 
Sometimes you Mad get down on the there. toilet and no, man, she she would not take a shit in here. No, no, it would not happen. <laughs> that's why that's hilarious to me. No, that would not. Um, also, tomorrow, can someone help me pronounce this? Katrinata. Katramine. Katramine. I didn't want to butcher it. Katramine. I'm yeah, really excited yeah. for this album. This is one I was actually looking forward to the whole year. So. I want to see Katrinata live. So do I. Me too. Well, actually, I did see him. I, when Joyce opened up for him, I saw him live. But I got really tired because the show started at midnight. Yeah. So Joyce is set. I, I started. Yeah, I Doze, once she got off stage, I was like, ah, it's 3 a.m. I think, uh, I don't think I can wait for Katrinata. Yeah, I definitely want to catch a Katrinata sh- a live show. Um, seeing the pictures from Coachella and then another show. Um, and I was just like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta see that. That's, you gotta that's be on drugs my type of vibe. When you listen to that, mom, I gotta be on drugs. Like when you I'm have to be. Wait, why would you put that on? Katrinata is not that type of. No, he. Well, he's not like EDM. I okay, mean, there's I'll, elements I'll, to his electronic shit, but it's a definitely like more of a R and B vibe. The only it. drug I would be on is marijuana. Mm. I mean, that'll be hey, perfect yeah. drug for Katrinata. Yeah, right. perfect. Yeah. Uh, if it ain't, that's the only drug I'll be on listening to Katrinata. Um, but yes, outside of that, again. My Phone Can Die featuring James Fonteroy and Ari Lennox is out now on all DSPs. My album is out May 26th, one week from today, if you're listening to this on Friday. Um, so yeah, it's new music. You think I'm, I'm going to like shut the year down or what? Shut the year down. <laughs> <laughs> I think the year will be up. I think the year is going to be fine. <laughs> the year, I, if it's one thing I can promise you, Rory, after your album drops, the year will be perfectly fine everything will be okay and yeah. i lack the artist ego so much like because mm-hmm. i want to be like yo i think this is album of the year because i do feel like it's a really really good album but i'm like there's like mad months left yeah we don't know what <laughs> beyonce's rumored to be coming like how arrogant would that be in may i was like yo album of the year yeah for the next five to six months bullshit i don't care what else <laughs> i don't care <laughs> what else is coming this is it this yeah. is the only album that matters rihanna's rumored to yeah. have a joint Album with fucking Hold Beyonce has been seen in the studio, <laughs> <laughs> but this, my friend, album is the of album year. of the year. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I let the fans decide. Yeah, let yeah. the fans decide. Uh, but I do think they will uh, enjoy the project. So let's right. I'm looking forward. Should to I that. boycott the Grammys since I, I made made it in time uh, for next year's Grammys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, why not? Why I, not? That for you. I think if you were a well known person, I think this album will win a Grammy. I just want to say that. Damn. So you're not a well. Yeah, you're not well known. That's all that I took from that. Damn, you're not a well known person. I thought about I that. I think if you're, that's so stupid. That's some dumb. He could have said thank you. you know, I think if you were a well known person, <laughs> he's well known, right? Well-known. I think I could maybe sneak in with like one of those weird alternative Celtic R and B album. You know the shit they don't air. Yeah, like they what they do in the morning mm-hmm. for the Grammys. I think I could sneak in and get a morning Grammy. Like just some weird category, like. Collaborative Best. collaborative album from an Irish American yeah. with R and B plus Celtic music and also features Reason from TDE. Best red like that. I think that category I would kill. Best redheaded playlist curated by a podcaster yeah. who hails from Queens. Yeah, where just giving out Queens Grammys. Yeah, I think not. It took Nas that- thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, our borough's not in the favor of the Grammy. No, nah, if, they, if they give out, if that's an award, that's your, that's that's definitely locked up for you. You got that. Now nah, I think about it, yeah, Grammys doesn't really fuck with queens like that. Nah, not at all. Damn. See, y'all got to work crazy. Hard. Y'all got to work hard for y'all Grammys, yeah. That's wild. Uh, so let's get into some voicemails. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, shout out to everybody that's subscribed to our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash new Rory and Mall. All right, so let's get into the first voicemail. Anonymous. Hey, Rory and Maul and gang. Hope y'all doing well. My question is, how do y'all feel about your significant other having a work husband? And would y'all be okay with it or be cool with the guy? Thanks for the advice. I love when uh, the younger listeners ask questions that like we ran into the ground for a decade on yeah. on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But he sounds young and I'm sure he wasn't around for those conversations. Yeah, when, no. He when, we all like... so, when we all solved this with nah. Yeah, yeah like <laughs> nah. Fam, no, your your girl can definitely not have a work husband. Not cool with it. Well, let's define that. What is a work husband? A work husband is the male coworker that your wife at, or your girlfriend has that you know they're just cool. They click. He brings her if he goes out to get something to eat. He knows that she likes the burritos there. He brings her. One okay, back. so that means in this logic, Worry is Damaris's work husband. Actually, well, Yomi's my work husband. Mm, work wife. Yeah. Work work day. Work day. Yeah. Um. Well, there was a lot of there was a time when Damaris and Maul were definitely work wife and work yeah husband. he no he st- no he left me for Julian. No, nah, I think, is, I think Julian is right now, yeah. I think Julian's you giggle when he husband. walks in he giggles when you walk in they're they're I left, you guys ew. have like 
because I've been in corporate offices. When those two people just start giggling when someone walks in, you guys have like inside jokes and stories we you don't be, know about. You be talking giggling? outside of work for no, sure. No, I was laughing at the fact that he posted a picture of him modeling all morning. And then he walked oh, in. Oh, that's and one, that's one knew, of several laughs. He knew though. what I was laughing at him about. Like, oh, you such a pansy. Look at you. You were modeling all morning. They go to Knicks games together. Like, honestly, yeah, if I was Julian's. Me and Julian have never been to a Knicks game together. That's not uh, true. Well, y'all were supposed but to you did say you did true. say <laughs> you did say two days ago. You're like, yo, I was gonna call you after the the Knicks law. I like you guys talk because he's a he's a Nick. He's fan. a what? I'm a, I've been a Nick fan way well, longer than you. I'm just saying, if I was Julian's husband, I wouldn't like the fact that y'all are talking about the Knicks outside of work. Mm. But that is true in this work think, husband think scenario. It, nah, you that, gotta think about it. Though. Nah, I'm, I'm not thinking about it. Like, no, that's just no. That's but. No, first of all, that's why would he be my work? I'm first of all, I'm a heterosexual man. You can still have a work husband and you be hetero. No, yeah. you cannot. Well, you're yeah, my work stop husband. Stop letting these fucking politicians tell you that it's okay to do that. It's not okay to do that. I can't even spell politics. <laughs> who, who said that? <laughs> Any politician. It's no, it's not. Um, heterosexual. Well, to answer to give anonymous, anonymous some advice. Nah, uh, I think <laughs> that's well, the not, advice. Nah is number one. But if we're going to go to option B, if that exists, like there has to be a line. If To Maul's point, if he's going out and sh- knows to go get that burrito they probably on the same salary she gotta pay like he may be just doing a favor to go get it he can't be buying her lunch he can't be bringing her leftovers from the night before be like oh i had a lot left so i brought you like don't bring don't bring my girl tinfoil i do like all aluminum foil my girl can't touch your aluminum foil or your leftovers i bring y'all food all the time though whenever i cook i bring y'all food she does. I think that's regular co-worker shit. Wait, like, I don't nah, like but you got to be wait. careful with that. I don't remember one time Damaris has ever nah, brought food. Nah, nah, nah. Damaris has brought food. You've cooked in my career Work like cooked. non-podcast yeah. related. When have you brought us in the leftovers with the... She did. She definitely did. I bring food all the what time. What was it? I forgot what it was for. I bring, but you don't say shit. Well, you don't bring touch food for me because I'm vegan. So well, you you're vegan. vegan Julian shit. eats my food all the time. And yeah, so it sounds like Julian is your work husband. Mm. And you guys do bicker like a married couple. Yeah, y'all first y'all hated each other. Now y'all love each other. Yeah, marriage. Yeah, that's how it goes. Y'all will work. See, look how fast we found out who's the work husband here. Julian is your work husband. To answer Anonymous's uh question though, nah. Only reason why <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's no. just nah. It's just nah. Only reason why I say this is because there was a a, a situation uh on my on my block uh years ago where I grew up at, where a girl that lived across the street from me, her husband um, I guess he suspected that she was dating a guy that she worked with. So, like, I think she worked overnight and, like, left, got home at, like, 5 in the morning or something. So the work husband used to drop her off home, right? So it turned into, like, I guess he didn't have to pick her up from work no more because the work husband was like, no, nah, I'll just drop her off so the, the real husband doesn't have to wake up early to go get her, that whole thing, right? So I guess he started suspecting, like, nah, something's happening here. And so he was like staked out in another car on the block uh, and waited for them to pull up. And they pulled up on the block, but they were like kind of pulled over, parked by a hydrant in the car for wait. It's not just a drop off. It's like, oh, y'all in the car kicking it. I mean, they were talking about the work. No, they they, they, <laughs> they started. No, seriously. They, well, probably. They were but, talking about spreadsheets. No, probably. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. else was spread. So, yeah, something else. Um, <laughs> They started, like, I guess, making out, kissing and stuff like that. Oh, no. And Thank God Julian's not here for this PTSD. And, yeah. he, <laughs> and he walked up on the car and killed his wife. Whoa. Oh, shit. Holy on my block. shit. Literally God. on my block. All right. I didn't okay, know. Okay. That, I didn't that, see that, that, that coming. Yeah. That went he crazy. Shot at, he shot at the dude. The dude ran. Like, he got out of the car and ran. Like, like, like ran down the block, ran through the park. It's a park on my left block. Left his work wife? Left his left the, left the wife in his <laughs> truck. It was his truck. Left the wife in the truck. The husband came back Wow And shot her in the car Yeah so that's, that's a wow. big no Don't do that No but that's what I'm saying You yeah. can't yeah. It's, it's very You know what I mean Because levels. You, don't, you don't know what's going on In, in her life Yeah outside like of work. you gotta right. be careful With that because again Homie we, might be crazy We we know We 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 talking about it We joking with this caller This uh, voicemail But yeah. We do know that If your girl works somewhere And a guy is like You know obviously He's attracted to her We just We're adults We know what it is Like he's attracted to her they hit it off well. They 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 you, they spend a lot of time with each other. They work together. I was gonna so. say it's the easiest layup when you're in those offices because no matter what, you spend so much time together. Exactly. Number two, you have a common goal of like complaining, mm-hmm. like all the shit your girl wants you to be a listener about. Mm-hmm. Like even after you've had a long day at work and she just wants to tell you about her day, that's part of her job. Like he listens because it's his gig. Yeah. <laughs> like he has to listen to her yeah. work bullshit, so she takes it as like. And then if something's going on between me. y'all. 
Oh, please. She's sharing that with him. So now he know mm, when not mm, to mm, fuck mm. up. Nah, don't nah, let nah, them. Word, he did that, yo. He bugging. Don't nah. let them if travel I Don't tell it. my wife I'm bugging, my nigga. Yeah. Like, <laughs> word. <laughs> fuck that. You know what I'm saying? But it happens. It, it, it's a real thing. So that's why, no, I would say it's a, she can be social at work, but all the work husband. First of all, just even calling I was going to say that. Like, stop. We're not even playing that. them games. Like, don't. Nah, it ain't no work husband. Like, I'm your husband. <laughs> I'm your boyfriend, whatever. Like, you ain't yeah. got no work boyfriend, no work husband. We're not doing that. Yeah. So, nah. He said, would you be cool with the, with the dude? He said, what if, you know, the dude was trying to be cool with you? Who is that? I'm not cool with no nigga that's think he my girl. That's her coworker. Husband. Fuck out of here. Yeah. I'm, what if, okay, well, what if he's gay and he's her work husband? Fuck that. If he's gay? Mm-hmm. Oh, then it's all good. <laughs> but he, what type of gay, though? Rory, like, what nah. What do you mean, Look what type of gay? Rory, Rory, nah, nah cause some of these niggas don't be gay, gay. What the fuck? What? Wait, you, what? now you're going against your entire theory of No, yeah. like, <laughs> nah, cause gay can Now be, you're contradicting your whole nah, self. Nah, cause gay could be like, yo, you, you like, you, you do like men, but it's like, you might suck a titty if she let you. <laughs> and isn't that That's why a, the face I was making, Damaris, is Pretty much to Maul's point, because I've seen the gay bestie or the gay friend, like, take it too far. Even if he doesn't want to suck a titty. Yeah. I'm just not cool with, like, you just get a pass to just grab titties and I ass seen, and, like... Yeah, don't it's tell just my girl odd, she like, look good. She been working out, grab her ass. Like, girl, you nah, you ain't that gay, nigga. But don't gay work husband's different. Yo, what the yeah. fuck is wrong with gay you? Especially, like, when your homegirls don't even touch you like that. Like... What? Cause I've seen. All right, we know when like <laughs> kick it, cuz yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, cuz kick it. <laughs> Sorry, you sounded like fucking Smokey Robinson. You said kick, kick it for me, cuz <laughs> kick it, cuz kick it, cuz. I almost lost my train of thought. Um, there's just plenty of of gay men that are too handsy. We watch their homegirls do the ass slapping shit when they're out, like at a club or like yep. having fun. Mm-hmm. The gay men just be doing that, like. In broad daylight on a weekday, like y'all having coffee. Why are you grabbing her titties? Yeah, like they. Wa- <laughs> she walks in like it's not the time for that. Her homegirls, like the girls are girling today. Yeah, like, no, and no, it's no, like no. you can't tell my girlfriend the girls are girling today. No, you you could do that, but you don't have to then grab them in broad daylight. Yeah, like at least let the sun go down. Yeah. <laughs> I just right. feel like gay men purposely get too handsy. Like they like to see the line they can cross. Especially when they know her boyfriend is around. Mm-hmm. I've seen him. Like, all right, relax, bro. Yeah. Like, if you want to slap her ass when she's dancing, have a blast. Like, you're one of the girls. I get it. But nah, we having coffee right now. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen women make out like, with their gay besties. get your hand off her titty. You've Wait, seen you women see? make out with their gay besties? See what I'm saying? What? No, what? And now I got to kill somebody. Real. That's been a thing. That's, I've Look definitely seen that I happen kill somebody. They gonna call it a hate crime. For real? No, it's not a hate crime. Like, this nigga That's not a hate crime. Why? Why would you? But I don't understand. What do you mean, why, Damaris? What? What do you mean why? What does why mean when you, he just said he's seen a girl make out with her well, gay with bestie? With their gay bestie. And I was like, what's wrong uh, with that's that? weird. If he's gay, what's wrong with Fam, that? So your what? man can make no, out with no, his no. Uh, Demaris, you homegirl not that. You, you, <laughs> I'm asking if we have a podcast. Yeah, but you're not. Come on. Don't, don't, ask, me no shit like, don't ask me no shit like that. Right. You know why not. I really don't know why not. Can your boyfriend kiss his uh, his lesbian uh, best friend? And not the dyke one, the bad bitch one. Yeah, the pretty <laughs> one. The lipstick, the lipstick lesbian. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. You, you look over there because you want to fuck her too. That bullshit. You know you can't. You're not accepting that. You're yeah. not accepting that. There's no way. No. No human being is accepting yeah, that. Like yeah. my girl kissing another. I don't care if he's gay. No, no you're not kissing another dude. What is. No. Okay. It's unacceptable. So anonymous, nah. No work husband. All right, Next let's, caller. Let's do the second one. And I, we got on a whole tangent when the simple answer to anonymous is nah. just no. Nah. No. Nah. Yeah, nah. just no. Big no. Not big, doing big, that. Big, big, Sorry. Big no. yeah. And pull up with a job. Get her fired. You never know. Right. This is from, <clears throat> this is from Terrence. Thank you, Terrence. Yo, what's up, Rory Maul, everybody else? Uh, my name is Terrence, and my son's birthday is this Friday. I wanted to see if y'all can give him a shout out. Him and uh, my fiance. Uh, her name is Nicolette. His name is Malika. I can't remember if I said my name is Terrence. Uh, I'd appreciate it, man. We both listen to the pod. And we enjoy it. Been listening since the old pod. So, uh, yeah, man. Y'all take care. Well, happy birthday, Malachi. Happy I'm birthday, Malachi. Birthday. Happy birthday, Nicolette. Um, thank you, Terrence, for that. And it's I also Nicolette's birthday. Or no, just I think shout he just out? wanted to shout. Out. Oh, well, shout yeah. out to to your beautiful wife. Oh, I um, thought he was saying it was his son and his girl's birthday. Mm-hmm. Oh, that'd be so. tragic. 
Yeah, you said give the fan birthday or wishes. Or you could knock out two birds and one stone. Though. That'd actually be a cool situation. Yeah, why not? To have a if your, your son... girl and your son had the same birthday, you'd be broke. What if it's like no? Nah, it's just like we just one day. Yeah, they could cool. be. They could also be a couple days apart. And it'll be gifts. Fun. Gifts. You have to do gifts. You sound like Doctor Umar. Gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Donations. Gifts. Donations. Donations. <laughs> this is Red Lobster. Gifts. Hey, I want to kick it with Dr. Uber. I, I, so bad. I want to be cursed out by him. Like, it would be an honor. I know. To be cursed I, out. You think he cursed you out? Because I yeah. think me and Dr. Yeah, Uber, and I would love it. We could really get to the root of the problems in the hood, man. I'm telling you. Like we could me and Dr. Umar, because I know what he'd be wanting to say, but he gotta keep it kind of like, you know, intellectual. But he'd be wanting to say, yo, you niggas is stupid. <laughs> For real. I believe he said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I'm like, and I just want to coat, like, let me ad lib the shit he's saying. And I think we can effectively make some dialogue that will like make change in the community. I do, I believe that. I agree with a lot of his his no, doctor, I love points. Dr. Umar. He's, yeah. he's, 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 he's also very funny, though. He's, he's hilarious. Yeah, he'd be dead ass, but he's very he's hilarious. Yeah, but he's, uh, a, he's an entertainer for sure. Nicolette and Malachi, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Uh, shout out to Terrence. We appreciate you. Yeah, happy and uh, good luck to you for that day. I know you're going to have to take care of everything. So prayers with you. Yeah, <laughs> prayers, prayers with you too, Terrence. And, uh, we might thank, have to send Terrence, sell him like $50 or something, man. Yeah. That works. Thank All you right. for listening for so long, Terrence. And I'm, I'm glad you have such a great family that has birthdays um well yeah just just two voicemails today well technically one we did some shout outs after that um this is something we're going to continue on but mm -hmm. you know we got to pull back on certain stuff because some people they're doing these voicemails just to say some wild shit and we're mm -hmm. trying to have some conversation nah, we got we're gonna start playing some of this wild shit though we may dedicate a few patreon episodes just to voicemails yeah, just, just, just just to some of the wild shit that people be leaving and, and talking about like i like talking about wild shit sometimes let's do it i'm not mad at that and don't I, be afraid to say wild shit just do like oh go crazy work husband did he did anonymous you don't have to say your name and anything you can just enter as anonymous so do that if you really want to get wild and rough and buck what's wrong with her well, I, what did those two things have to do with anything to do with voice i don't know man I the bucks aren't on the playoffs and how would an anonymous voicemail lead to that? Yeah. Because if they wanted to say something, because if they wanted to say something that's really salacious or something really wild, they wouldn't want their name attached to it. That's why I said that. So they would then horny, get wildly bro. fucked afterwards? Yeah. Wait, what? Demarish you said what? that. I didn't say that. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> Thank you guys I, I so didn't much for tuning in. I you never thought I would miss Julian, but oh, I miss him man. so oh, much. We, we didn't even address why Julian's not here. Oh, yeah. uh, he's at his first <laughs> modeling gig. Yeah. What We're going to save it for now. We're going to kill him in what person. What a fucking fairy. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a fucking fairy, man. What do you mean you had just, your first modeling gig? We'll just let you know. He's such a pansy. In the group chat, he was giving us updates of his outfits. He was so, getting yeah. makeup done. He was getting makeup done. Don't do that. I have a, a photo of you, and I won't use it as blackmail, because you know I have that it. Wasn't why, makeup. Why that wasn't makeup. Why is it blackmail? You, okay, but that it appears makeup. like... She was, brushing, she was brushing my eyebrow. When does the truth matter? <laughs> The truth does she not was, matter. She was brushing, in the photo, she was brushing my eyebrows. I didn't have any color. She didn't add any color to my face. I call cap. Any tone, nothing. In the photo, you are beat to the gods. Hey. No, that's just my natural look, baby. She is. It's that melanin, that black gold. She is putting like the makeup on your face. No, it was. She was brushing Thank you. my eyebrows. Literally, it was a brush. You gave her eyebrows. your Fenty number. No, she I, put some brow gel. You no, gave what? her your Fenty. She number. put some brow gel on it and no, had she did them not. eyebrows. It was literally just place. a brush. That's all it was. It was a brush. I was like, "Yo, no makeup on my face." She was like, "Oh no, I'm not. No I'm makeup. I'm lying." She put um, powder oh. for the shine. Oh, okay, that that makes just sense. for the light. Yeah, she was like, just glow on your face. That's no makeup. It was just powder, just so my face wouldn't be too shiny on camera. That was it. But it wasn't no makeup. It wasn't no not doing that. I mean, it's no makeup. Well, Never okay. disrespect to God. Anyways, uh, before we close out, um, there was some sports stuff. Outside. Yeah, Ja. Well, the Nuggets won Game One. Right. Um, it was a great game. Uh, Jokic. I, yeah, man. The, the Lakers just gonna have to literally just beat him up. Just bring some niggas from sixty Crips out there and let them jump that nigga in Denver. Uh, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's the only way they're going to be able to stop him, man. He had a crazy triple-double. Uh, Anthony Davis had a great game, too, but yep. uh, they lost. Uh, so the Nuggets won game one. I do think that series is going seven games, and hopefully the Lakers can get past them. Spurs dynasty is bike. Spurs dynasty is back. Uh, Co Coach Popovich was talking about retiring soon. Pop is never... Re he <laughs> and now they have With the Vic? number one draft pick uh, in this year's draft, and there's no way Greg Popovich is retiring anytime soon. He's going to turn Victor... Wimbanyama into a Hall of Fame. Viana? No way. Nah. He's staying. He's going to be, Victor is, I think that Victor has the tools already to be better than Tim Duncan and David Robinson. I mean, he's 7'7". Seven, seven. Yeah, like, no, <laughs> not, right? not, not just 7'7", seven, because seven, we've seen 7'7 seven, seven players before. He is an agile 
He moves like a guard. He shoots. Yeah, like it's, this is a different oh, type of- triple team him. How do you block a shot of someone that tall? This is a different type of talent. This is a dip, different type of player. Um, and I think that, I do think that San Antonio will keep the number one pick. People talking about they might trade it and things like that. I think no. they keep it. Um, Pop and, wants to coach that kid. Yeah, and I think Pop is going to turn Victor into a, what he did for Tim Duncan and David Robinson and any other player that has played for him. He's going to lead them into a championship contender. Uh, probably, I, I think that they will win some championships. Well, I mean, I know everyone's been talking about this kid and can he stay healthy at that height? And, you know, he's been doing well, weight training. The physicality skinny, of like, the game, yeah. It takes one <clears throat> thing with a knee that tall yeah. to happen. But rarely does it happen where a prospect, if not, this has probably been the biggest prospect since Braun, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Could potentially, and it looks like, is going to go with one of the greatest coaches of all time as a number one pick. Mm-hmm. That's also wild with this story. I was, I'm still nervous about this kid even being on the court because he looks fragile and I know he's been training. But the fact that you get pop as your coach, when, when have we ever seen that? Yeah, no, I, and we usually know, the great coaches are not getting the number one pick. And, and, and listen, we know that this was set up. We know that this was, this was a gift to pop of it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? It is what it is, but I'm not mad at it because if anybody can take, <sighs> Victor and turn him into a Hall of Fame player and a champion. It is Coach Popovich, who yeah. to me is arguably the greatest basketball coach ever. Um, Phil, Phil had had his legacy with made with Jordan. Yep, that was solidified. And even when Kobe was drafted, I don't think Phil was the no. coach because then he was no. Kobe was traded too. Um, Kobe, no, the, well, no, Kobe was drafted by the Hornets. By the I Hornets, believe. and it was a trade. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but Phil Jackson was not the coach then. Though. Uh, even Larry Brown came after Iverson was with the Sixers. I'm just trying to think of yeah, they number one in. picks that have ever had like a legendary coach as they go in. Out the gate? <laughs> yeah. That's, I can't think of it. Yeah, no. Because well, usually I, when you're a legendary coach, you don't get the number one pick because you're busy winning games and changing. Exactly. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, this is um this is a perf a perfect match. Um I'm 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 happy for Victor. Um they showed uh, pictures of him as a kid. He had a Tony Parker Spurs jersey on. Look at that. And so right. it's like, you know, that's just just, just God working, but um, French connection. Popovich is not retiring no time. Heroin, so. right? Oh, what? Never mind. Okay. French connection. They're both from France. Yes. Tony Parker. Oh. Spurs, and then Parker. French connection was it? Got oh, you. They I, brought I heroin into. Did. Yeah, it's cool. I, I got. I, I see what you did there. Not ready for my bars. Um, the uh Ray Allen. So what happened was Ray Allen was asked what was oh, his God. his greatest starting five ever, right? Mm-hmm. What, what, starting five and a six man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And somebody sent it to me because they were saying that, you know, uh, when I named my starting, mm-hmm. my top seven players of all time, mm-hmm. people were mad that I had LeBron at mm-hmm. number seven. So I was like, oh, okay, I understand. But Ray Allen, somebody who, one of the greatest uh, basketball players ever, in my opinion, uh, one definitely one of the greatest shooters ever, they asked him the same questions, all-time starting five. People like to ask, you know, Hall of Fame players, their all-time starting fives. His, but they wanted him to name a six man. So his starting five was Jordan, mm-hmm. Magic, mm-hmm. Bird, Shaq. And I was surprised that he put Hakeem Olajuwon one there. Uh, Hakeem is a, is, a, is a legend, but that's not one you see top five all the time. But what was his six yeah, man? Could you imagine Shaq and Hakeem? And that's, and that's what another thing. I was like, you're starting is, five? Is like, there enough space in the paint? Yeah. I was just like, <laughs> Hakeem is agile. He can be a power forward. He can shoot it. It'll be yeah, shut down. I though. get that. Um, but it was still a little weird to, to have. To not have Kobe in pause. The that's a lot of mass in the paint. Yeah, but okay, that's 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 Ray Allen starting. It's a lot five. of Charlemagne bets. But, wow. Um, then his sixth man was LeBron. So people were like, you know, of course, LeBron fans are like, oh, Ray Allen doesn't know what the fuck. I love when they say people like Ray Allen don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You can tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Mm. You can't tell Ray Allen that he doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to his all time starting five. When he's played the game at a very high level, he's a legend in the game, and he played with LeBron. So that's why a lot of people were, were really upset because they're like, "Oh, you were teammates with LeBron in Miami. You got a ring together." And I guess they felt like LeBron should have been in his top five at least. But I was just wanted to uh, bring that up just to say, like, I'm not just the only guy that has LeBron top seven. 
I, it's just odd to me that Kobe is not anywhere in there. But now, that was crazy to me. I don't know what that well, was Well, to be fair, he said who would be his starting five, not his top basketball players of all time. Your so with a starting five, you need a certain amount. You need a certain amount of number of each type of player. I'm sure if you, they said who's your top five of all time, your top, it would be maybe different. Maybe two spots would be different. So I'm just saying, yeah, that that that's not far-fetched for people to have uh, LeBron James in their top seven. It's not mm -hmm. a knock on LeBron. LeBron is one of the greatest basketball players of all time. I think he's one of the greatest greatest humans of all time. Sorry for the AIDS joke. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was just that was just interesting to see Ray Allen say that. Word. Who asked him that? I think it was some blogger. Sports Illustrated? Sport, it was Sports Illustrated? I believe so. No, I don't think it was Sports Illustrated. Yeah. You know what's fucked up with these questions, though? And I feel for whether it be athletes or even rappers or media personalities when they do interviews and you get asked like the top five questions mm -hmm. and you just like don't have one ready and rehearsed you may say some things you don't agree with mm. like you're on the spot and you have to name a five without really thinking about it because mm. i hate when i get like certain rap questions in interviews and i'm just like i say names and then i go back like no nah, i don't agree i'm gonna get killed rightfully yeah. so because i don't agree with what i just said <laughs> yeah i don't it, I, it is interesting that he doesn't have kobe in his top six that is very interesting but teach his own uh what you got going on for the weekend man what you, you know. get into just preparing for the album. Releasing the album. Yeah. Preparing for the release of the album. Going out to LA next week. Uh -huh. Um We won't see each other, guys. Well, technically. Thank God I don't see Ed in. Wow. What the fuck? Yeah. What, what did I do? Well, you're his, oh, you're his your, work ex. It's just your... You I'm know, his work ex? It's, yeah. He's moved on to Julian. It's, oh, damn. Yo, that is crazy that y'all keep pumping. We clip, we we already figured it out. It's Julian no. and Damaris. Nah, me and Julian don't hang out outside of work. We well, do. I, but I think like Edin thinks you're his work husband, but you don't think... He's, it's not a mutual relationship. Why are you staring at me? Because he loves you. <laughs> <laughs> this has but been yes, another episode, be <laughs> man, of New Rory and Maul. We appreciate y'all. Uh, subscribe to our Patreon.com forward slash New Rory and Maul now. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, we'll talk to y'all soon. Be blessed. Have a safe weekend. And I'll see you guys, I guess, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. 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 Be All out in right. the streets in LA going crazy. Be out in LA doing LA, LA LA shit. LA by the pool. I'll be in the hotel. You, you'll be working I'll be going to press run shit and LaRory that's about it alright well be safe we'll talk to y'all soon I'm that nigga he's just ginger peace no.